What's up, what's up, what's up, everybody? You are listening to the Data is My Science podcast, the show that makes data your passion. I am your host, Dapper Data. I have a very special guest on here today. Understanding backups, right, is very important. Okay, when you're thinking about backups, making backups of a collected amount of data from many sources is critical and very important in the data management system. All right. And when you think about backups, right, backups protect against that human error. They protect against the uh, the hardware failure. They protect against virus attacks. They protect against power failure. You name it. Right. Natural disasters, all of the above. Right. There's different tiers to it. Backups can help save time, money and all the failures that are in place out there and everything, because there's a lot of failures that occur every day. So I brought a special guest on to really talk about this subject of backups. His name is Mr. Backup. <laughs> so I, I want you to understand that, you know, the title means everything, right? Because backup is very important in every organization, every industry in place. It is something that I, I think a lot of people bypass, right? I've been working in many industries uh, and, and, and many um, uh, different uh, like healthcare, you name it, right? I've, I've been working in all those things and finance industry. And for some reason, being in the technology portion, nobody really talks about backups, but they are probably the most important thing. I mean, I looked at my own uh, uh, Android phone the other day and there's backups always happening every day, right? So that's something that's very small, but we have to think about it. The end user understands backups are always being captured. Backups are always being captured in your, your your huge organization, enterprise organization. So I brought a special guest to talk about backups. All right. His name is Curtis Preston, a.k.a. Mr. Backup. Curtis, say what's up to everybody. What's up, everybody? <laughs> so Curtis has specialized in designing data protection systems since 1993 and has designed such systems for some of the largest organizations in the world. He is a very popular author and speaker as well. He has written four O'Reilly books. Now, when I think about O'Reilly books, I've talked about this before and probably some of my beginning podcasts. You know, they have Python. They have all these different subject matters uh, uh, just, to, just to talk about specialization within some of the IT subjects that we care about. And Curtis has been a part of that journey. So that's amazing. And the latest one that he has, has actually developed is uh, Modern Data Protection, published in 2021. He is also uh, a host of BackupCentral.com and its Restore It All podcast. So he's a podcaster himself. Uh, you know, so don't don't critique me too much, Curtis, over here as a podcaster. Man. All right. <laughs> so I'll he's now trying. chief technology te technical evangelist uh, for Druva and the only at scale SaaS provider of data protection. Welcome on the podcast, uh, Curtis. Thank you. I appreciate you being on the podcast. Is there anything that you want to uh, give the audience and tell them a little bit about yourself? Well, you know, you mentioned a lot of it. Uh, I have been in the backup space for a minute, as the kids say. And, um, <laughs> you know, no one cares if you can back up, only if, if you can restore. That thing you talked about, about the you know the people don't talk enough about backups that's one thing that hasn't changed in the you know almost 30 years that i've been doing this and that the, and so that's really that's what i see as my role is to is to bring up that topic and to bring it up in a lot of places many of which are uncomfortable for some people right um talking yeah. about things that they think they don't need to back up but in reality they do yeah yeah so I mean, why is that? Why do you think, in your opinion, that people do not care as much about the backup? It's not that sexy thing that we talk about. Is that what it is? <laughs> you know, I, I see it as the it's like the plumbing of of IT. Right. Mm -hmm. Everyone needs good plumbing. Right. Mm -hmm. No one wants to do the plumbing. <laughs> uh, you know, in the in the pre-show we chatted, I'm, I'm a DIY person. Plumbing is one of those things I farm out. Uh -huh. um, I, I'm, I'm able to do it. Right. Uh, but I, I hate it. It's just yeah. like, you know, one of the things is that when you're 90% of the time you're underneath a sink or something. And so you're like super uncomfortable while you're doing it, mm -hmm. either that, or you're dealing with 
waste plumbing, which is a whole right. other set of problems, right? I don't um, want to deal with that. <laughs> yeah, no. A, a, a backups is, is kind of like that in that, you know, you're either invisible or you're in trouble. No one remembers the millions of backups that you got right. They only remember mm -hmm. the one restore you got wrong, right? If you go wow. back... If you go back to 1995, the you know I, I've I've done pretty well for myself with backups mm -hmm. and whatnot. If you talk to the guys that worked with me back in the early 90s, the only thing they're going to tell you about is the time I accidentally pressed the EPO button, right, uh -huh. and <laughs> shut down the power in the data center, right. Oh my goodness, it's, it's, a, it's, a, difficult, <laughs> it's a difficult job, right, and uh, and so you know it's. It's a it's a difficult and thankless job, and yeah. and uh, it's easy to, you know, it, it it's also been a lot harder over the years than it is today. I think modern backup systems like where I work easier than than what you know uh, they were when I was dealing with things back when we were wrestling tape drives. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, much much easier today, but. The, the, you know, no one, no one's, you know, I've got a nine-year-old granddaughter. She, she's telling me she's going to be a fashion designer. Nobody says <laughs> when I grow up, I want to be a backup person. Backup specialist. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I've that, never that heard that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so throughout my career, I have dealt with storage a lot, right? You know, NAS, Block, uh, um, I have dealt with the cloud, right, you know, uh, but all like S3 storage, right, object storage, you know, buckets, things like that, uh, you know, and I've worked with like net backup a few times, like that's like the big thing that everybody talks about, right, uh, net backup. So if you look at archive and long-term storage, right, mm -hmm. you know, I remember having this conversation a while ago with net backup where uh, there's, I'm working with the this cluster this farm of 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 servers and you're sitting there and you're looking at like 90 percent of the data is not even being active right? right you know and 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 then you're thinking man you you all are wasting money putting it here you should put in archive for long term right they talk about that right. so your view what is your view on archive and long-term storage and then i want to talk about this cloud backup versus on-prem because Everything is changing, right? You know, people are starting to say, screw the on-prem stuff. Let me just go mm -hmm. to the cloud and store it there. You know, what's your thoughts on that? Well, let's see. There's a bunch of things there. So archive versus backup. Well, so first off, uh, I, everything you said fits within sort of my worldview. The way you <laughs> described archive is that's one type of archive moving off, um, you know, lesser used data off to a less expensive storage. It could be, you know, you, you could be using uh, fiber channel disk drives for your pri you know, primary. You could be using, uh, um, uh, obviously, solid state mm -hmm. drives for your primary. And then you move it off to maybe some SATA drives or maybe even to tape for longer term mm -hmm. storage. That is one type of archive. Another type of archive is when you take uh, data that, we definitely know we don't need anymore, but we might need it 10 years from now. So we archive it, right? We put it in an archive. It's sort of a, I think of it as like the electronic equivalent of putting it in a box and setting it on the shelf. And that most likely will go to tape or object storage, right? Yeah. Um, what um, the, and then another type that that's, I don't know if we want to call it an archive, but the another type is like an email archive where it's a mm -hmm. you're you're not moving anything technically mm -hmm. you're just storing another copy of it but for a very different purpose it's for the purposes generally for the purposes of e-discovery right that's another yeah. type of archive mm -hmm. those are all those are all great right uh, i have no problem with any of those i i actually think that any company um you know at least in the U S because we're so litigious, I think every company should have an email archive system, right? Okay. Uh, because that's where you get sued. Um, unfortunately 
what and 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 I think there's value to the other type of archive that we talked about. There, there's actually a term called active archive, which you know uh, I know NetApp is a part of the Active Archive mm -hmm. Alliance. This idea of just moving data that nobody's using out to lesser expensive storage. Uh, I like that. But then you can get it back tearing? immediately, right? Right. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, yeah. Essentially tiered storage, right? I like that idea. There, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, backup is a very different concept. Um, mm -hmm. Basically, you're storing a copy of the data for one purpose, and that is to restore that data. Um, you know, when the worst happens, right? You you listed mm -hmm. a bunch of the reasons, um, and sometimes we store those backups for a long time mm -hmm. for various reasons. But please don't use the term archiving your backups, right? Mm -hmm. Because that 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 isn't a thing. What you're saying uh -huh. is, I'm going, to, I'm going to keep my backups for a long time. When you say, because I, I uh -huh. just described, you make an archive, uh -huh. right? I, I described three, I think three different types of archives. You make an yeah. archive. The it, it hurts my ear when I hear people say, I'm archiving my backup. Well, technically, mm -hmm. that would mean you're restoring it all, then putting it into an archive system. You're not doing that. When you're archiving yeah. your backup, you're just taking your old backups and you're putting them on a shelf. Or you're putting the cheaper storage. It, I don't know. It, it, that 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 bugs my you know whatever. Um, here, here's but the, even like uh, sorry to cut you off, but they, like yeah. even even the the most the enterprise organizations use that term. I know. You know. I know. And, Everybody uses this term. Crazy. I didn't. Yeah. And honestly, I I feel I feel embarrassed a little bit. As technical as I am, I actually feel like man. I've never used the term archive backup, but I archive your backups, but I just thought, okay, if you're backing up and then the next layer is like archive yeah. or something. So you just kind the of problem, take it to that level. Yeah. The problem is that archive, like the word backup has a general sense, like, a, uh -huh. like, a, a, like it's a vernacular word. It's out there in the, in the ethos, like everybody uses it. The general yeah. person on the street, they know what an archive is. An archive mm -hmm. is old stuff, right? Mm -hmm. So in some sense, I've had to kind of get over this little pedantic uh, issue. I just, I want to, what I want people to understand, the reason why I don't like the term is that an archive is a purposeful system that is specifically designed for, a, you know, for a reason like the email archive that's designed for e-discovery, long-term storage archive that's designed to save you money. And then the file automatically comes back. If mm -hmm. I take a backup system, if I, if I make backups, backups are made to restore data to yesterday, maybe to yeah. a week ago, maybe to a month ago. If I've got backups from 10 years ago, they are near worthless. Okay. Yeah. Let me, let me ask you a question. So if, if you think about an average um, IT environment, right? Let, let's yeah. talk about, God forbid, they're running exchange. Okay. Um, <laughs> you know, the, the, you, you know about this huge hosted exchange outage that's going on right now right no no, um, no 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 yeah so on december 2nd we're recording this on december 23rd on december 2nd um a significant portion of rack spaces hosted exchange services got hit by ransomware they're still oh, there oh man okay it's you know and 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 they they've been they've been a hundred percent opaque in terms of mm -hmm. what they're tell what they're telling people about what's going on, uh, but God forbid you're running Exchange on your in your environment right maybe yeah. you're on Rackspace this right now but but five years ago you were doing Exchange on prem right mm -hmm. let me ask you a question do you think they can remember the name of the Exchange server from eight years ago <laughs> no nope. <laughs> <laughs> that's the first thing you need to know to do a restore, mm. right? That's that's why backups really shouldn't even be stored for a really long period of time. They mm. should be stored for maybe 18 months. This is my opinion, maybe mm. 18 months. Longer than that, it starts getting into these problems unless, and this is a big unless, unless you're able to search those backups in ways other than host name and directory name. Host name and database, uh, name, right? So if you've got a if you've got an Oracle server from nine years ago, you need to remember the name of the Oracle server, the name of the Oracle instance, right? The table you're uh, looking for. You need uh -huh. you need all these things to do a restore, 
right? If, if you had an archive, you would do what's called a retrieve. You say, give me all the emails from Curtis. There they are, mm -hmm. right? You don't, you don't do that with a backup system, generally. Right. Some backup systems are able to do that, most are not. Anyway, I, I don't know if that's what you were looking for when you asked me sure. <laughs> what I think about archives and backups. Yeah. Uh, but that but that's what comes to my mind. No, no, no. That was good because a lot of people, like I like I mentioned before, they they cannot decipher the difference. They they don't know the difference, right? right? You know, even right. enterprise organizations. And you know, for me, I do show ignorance when it comes down to when you're thinking backup versus archive. You know, you think about long term storage. You know, it's it, it does become something where uh, if if you're not specializing in it. You know, you kind of overlook right. it, you know, and so you yeah. just blend them all together and you just say, all right, this is like a tiering process. Right. I do backups yeah. to archive or something, the, you know, the big the big thing, I think, you know, if you're going to store backups for years, God forbid, decades, um, I had a customer, you know, I had a net backup customer. You talk about net backup. I had a net backup customer mm -hmm. years ago. They stored their backups indefinitely. Oh, mm -hmm. my heart. The problem <laughs> is. What do you do when you get an e-discovery request, right? Mm -hmm. Think about it. Because in, again, I, I can really only talk about the laws in the United States. Uh, mm -hmm. But if you get an e-discovery request, the rules, the, the federal rules for civil procedures, FRCP guidelines, basically say if you have it, if you've got a backup of your exchange from 15 mm -hmm. years ago, you can be asked for that data. Mm -hmm. Okay. The question is, how will you get those emails out? Let me tell you what you will do. Let's say you've got a weekly email backup from Exchange yeah. or whatever it is you're using. Um, you're going to restore a week ago. Then you're going to query for the emails from Curtis. Then you're going to delete that. Then you're going to restore to two weeks ago. Then you're going to query for the emails of Curtis. And you're going to do that for 52 times 15 years. Oh my goodness. You're so I participated when I was a consultant, I participated in, in a request for three years worth of data and they had a weekly backup of exchange. We had a team of like 15 people that were doing these restores around the clock. Mm -hmm. uh, it cost that company $2 million to require to, to comply with that request because, oh they had, because they were using their backups as archives. They did not have an email archive. They had they held they had old backups, right? So it's just it's just that's that's one of my hobby horses is like please don't think of your backups as archives. They are not. They are backups. They are made to restore data from a little while ago. They're not really made again unless your backup system can do that. If you can satisfy an e-discovery request with a single query, there are products right. I know Commvault, for example, does this. Um, um, I do not believe in that backup or. You know, any most of the competitors of Druva don't have this ability to do that. But if you can, then my, my objection, you know, I would draw my objection, Your Honor. But generally speaking, you should not be storing your backups for long periods of time. You're just asking for trouble. Well, that makes sense. That makes a lot of sense the way you broke it down. And 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 so when we talk about this cloud back backup versus on prem, yeah, I want to dive a little bit deeper in that because uh, you know majority of i mean on prem let's let's you know be frank on prem uh a lot of people that's how they make their money right a lot of those vendors out there right you got your net apps the emcs hitachis you know all of the vendors are like i know we're transitioning to the cloud but i have to make my money on this block nas and then object stores as on prem Right. And then yeah. I cannot use object stores in the cloud because you got your three competitors out there that already has object stores there. Right. You got your Amazon, yeah. you got your Google, you got your Azure that already has it. Why would I create, why would I even put my mine in their marketplace? And so, you know, uh, that's from, I guess you can think about archive standpoint. So uh, what's your thoughts on cloud backup? Right. When do I use cloud backup? versus on-prem or is it even a used to do on-prem anymore? Yeah. So I'll tell you, I, I, I just, I, I've never actually thought about it this way, but, but it's, it's, this is what's coming to my mind. It, just the way you described, right. So, so 
if you're one of these companies that is essentially moving to the cloud, right? You're you're yeah. you're making a you know even if you're doing a hybrid cloud, you're still moving to the cloud, and and a significant portion of your data is moving to the cloud. It reminds me, you know, there there was a time when uh, we we didn't have cars, right? We had we had uh, horse and buggy, right? Sure. And there were com <laughs> there were companies that made buggy whips, right? Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, then, you know, what, what's going on in the IT industry now is you start, you, you have these on-prem backup companies that are saying, well, what you want, if you move to the cloud, what you want to do is you want to have an on-prem copy of your cloud <laughs> data, right? To me, that's right. like, it's like these buggy whip makers, right? They're saying, you know, when you have that car, what would be really helpful is to have a buggy whip to like <laughs> to buff the car, right? To clean the car. You can use the buggy whip to clean the car. Yeah. It's ridiculous, right? The idea of throwing away all the, the, and the cloud isn't, I'm not, I'm not a cloud like purist or anything, but the cloud offers a lot of stuff mm -hmm. to take the wonder that is the cloud and bring it back into the nineties by backing it up to the on-prem data center. I don't get it. Like I just right. don't get it. Uh, mm -hmm. And I realize is that, you know, that ticks off a lot of the vendors that, that sell that stuff. Um, and so, uh, and yes, you know, I'll, I'll give a disclaimer. I work for a cloud backup company, but my mm -hmm. opinions, and I, I've been here for about five years, Druva, my opinions on this haven't changed. I would have never mm -hmm. thought the idea of backing up cloud to an on-prem data center would make any sense. Right. Um, and then the question, so, so I, I think it's, obvious that if you're backing up cloud data you should back up that data to the cloud right, right. it just it just makes sense um, now it should be to a different cloud i don't necessarily mean aws to azure i just mean don't do it in the same account don't do it in the same region etc cetera, etc cetera, et cetera. we got to separate separate the data um and i think it makes a lot of sense to back up on-prem data to the cloud let me give you sort of two primary reasons and then one reason hopefully i can keep this all this up in my head so two primary reasons one security 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 right mm -hmm. there is a huge i just came out um uh, an article in network world that i published just a few uh days ago they're coming you know ransomware is coming for your backup servers Mm -hmm. So what what the ransomware folks have figured out, they figured out two things. One is if you have a good backup system, you, you're not going to pay the ransom, mm -hmm. number one. Number two, if you have a good backup system and they can somehow uh, exploit the, and, and mm -hmm. they can get into that backup system and they're able to decrypt your data, it's actually a beautiful place, like a single point of contact for all of the data that they would like to exfiltrate and then use to um, to uh, uh, do extortion against your company, right? Because that's that's the that's the new that's the new ransomware, right? The old ransomware we we encrypt all your data, and if you don't have backups, you're screwed. The new ransomware is we're going to exfiltrate the data, decrypt it or decrypt it and exfiltrate it. And now they've got your company's, either your company's IP, they got your 11 herbs and spices, right? The, the uh -huh. KFC recipe, or they've got really embarrassing stuff about your company, things that you shouldn't have been doing. Uh, the best example I have of that was the Sony hack. I don't know if you remember this from like 10 no. years ago. Sony, it was Sony Studios, right? The, the, the motion picture side. And they they their email system got hacked and it was a ransomware attack back before that was really a thing. And mm -hmm. they actually think it was South Korea, uh, by the way, or I'm sorry, North Korea. But um, they um, um, th they published all these really embarrassing stuff about what the studios were saying about the talent that was working <laughs> to the mm -hmm. actors and stuff. So it's either your IP or embarrassing stuff like that. And they're like, give us a million dollars or many millions of dollars, right. or we're going to basically ruin your company. What they're seeing is that the backup system, if they can exploit vulnerabilities in your backup system and exfiltrate that data, uh, it's a great single source to get that data, right? Mm -hmm. Why hack a hundred servers when I only, when I only need to hack one. So that's, right, right. that's, 
my number one reason why I think an on-prem backup server is now a really bad idea. Um, the second is that um, basically just th there's a long list. Of, the, the second one is really, I don't know, 10 reasons, which is the way we've done backups, the way I've done backups for so many years is just difficult. Right. We right. have to we have to envision the size of the data center for the next three to five years. We have to build a system capable of backing that data up for three to five years. We have to buy that system now with today's money, even though right. most of it's going to go unused for most of its lifetime. Um, we then have to manage that OS and manage that application again for security reasons. We have to be constantly on the update. Right. right. Um it's just really difficult to then, and then performance tune all of that and capacity tune all of that. My thing is, why would you do all of that if if you can do it by just simply uh, using a cloud-based uh, data protection system? Now, I will say that the way we do things is not for everybody. If you've got 10 petabytes of data in a T1 line, you are not our tar target customer, <laughs> right? <laughs> um, you, you probably have other problems, but that you know th there is a point at which cloud backup doesn't cloud backup of an on-prem data center doesn't make sense. Um, th th we we find very few companies where that's the case. the The third reason really had to do with DR. So mm -hmm. the way to do DR these days is to use the cloud. And, and mm -hmm. I don't I don't know anyone other than the two or three companies who do non-cloud based uh you know dr you know like like the the sun guards and things like that other than companies right. like that i don't know anybody that disagrees with what i just said would right? that be like uh, another be, tier would you say that's another tier when you when you're on prem and then you're using cloud as that dr location or would you say that you know you need to still have it well, I guess regardless, if you go in the cloud, you have multiple regions that you can utilize to back it up and all that stuff. Even more. Yeah. Right? The, okay. the, well, the point is that it's super easy to do DR in the cloud. Mm -hmm. And it's easier, easier, <laughs> or even more easier if the <laughs> copy of the data that you need to do the DR is already in the cloud. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, so, you know, th there's this long list of reasons I think that D the, the, there's only one that I can think of. There's only one reason to, to not use the cloud. And that was the one I mentioned earlier. If you've got 10 petabytes of data in a T1 line, it's not going to work. Right. Right. Um, right, right. We're, we're just not that into you, but, uh, <laughs> but it, it, everybody else, which is 99% of the rest of the world back up to the cloud to a SaaS provider, by the way, I'm not just talking about using pick your favorite backup product and then, copying to um you know to s3 i'm talking mm -hmm. about a SaaS based service um mm -hmm. you know and by the way most of the vendors are starting to agree with us we've been out there you know um wayne gretzky's phrase of skating where the puck is going you know that phrase? yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. so we we've been doing that for for over 10 years we've been skating where the puck is going we we're waiting mm -hmm. we've been waiting over there in the corner all by ourselves, and then suddenly mm -hmm. in the last about year or two all of our competitors, right? So, you know, Comball, Veritas, um, um, Rubrik, Cohesity, uh, mm -hmm. NetApp, even not, not, they're not really a competitor, but all of these companies have started at offering SaaS based versions of their product, right? Wow. Um, so that they they all see that that's where the puck is going. Um, and, um, so I, I, just, I just think it makes a ton of sense to do it. And, and if you're already heading towards the cloud from a, from a computing standpoint, then it just makes a lot more sense, I think, to back it up in the cloud. Yeah, I, 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 know, I absolutely that, I know agree, that was a really right? long answer, by the way. I apologize. No, 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 no. It was good. I really appreciate that because I think the audience needs to understand the different reasons. And what you touched on was something that, I don't hear enough, right? You know, I, I personally hear if somebody was to say, hey, look, I'm going to, especially government, right? I deal a lot with the government, right? They're like, okay, if I'm going to back up here versus there, then it's about cost and maintenance, right? You, you kind of yeah. never really touched on that, right? You touched on security, which was very important. And there's some of the features. And so, you know, business decisions can often like come down to cost, 
right? And yep. and you know, but when something as important as like that critical data is out there, you know, it comes into play. Uh, I, I think um, cost has been a major factor for like the government, right? The decision isn't always just about the dollars and cents. And I like the way that you put that. You know, do you hear? Do you get? Do you get customers? that focus only on costs and is that the right way to go? Yeah. Well, so, so yes, we do. And by the way, you know, uh, I, I'm, you know, I'm chief technical evangelist, not necessarily chief product evangelist, right? right. I should <laughs> have, I should have mentioned cost as one of the reasons. Okay. Oh, okay. You do that. Um, okay. I was focusing mainly on, on the technical side, but cost is absolutely reason doing it on prem is also more expensive. Why? Yeah. I touched on it a little bit because you you have to size the thing for five years. You have to pay for something way before you use it. And generally yeah. what people do is they yeah. oversize. They don't want to undersize, so they oversize. Yeah. So they buy, they, 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 they need, you know, let's say one petabyte of storage. They figure out they yeah. need a, a petabyte size system in the next five years. So they buy a petabyte and a half. Yeah. Right. Yeah. They add so about 20, most, 30 percent on top. Yeah. Right? <laughs> most of that goes completely wasted in a cloud based system. That just doesn't happen. Google ah, customers pay. Yeah. It, it's they pay. They don't pay for what's provisioned. They pay for what they use. Right. Mm -hmm. That's that's the mark of a true SaaS service. Right. So you go to you go to 365. You pay for 100 users to use Microsoft 365. You go to mm -hmm. Salesforce, you have 10 sales per people, you're going to pay for 10 Salesforce licenses. You don't, you don't pay for all the IT stuff behind it, right? Um, mm -hmm. That's the same with us. If you're backing up, if you're backing up Salesforce or Microsoft 365 or your laptops, you pay for the number of people that are using the service, right? Now you, you tend mm -hmm. to buy it chunks at a time just for paperwork reasons right you'll say i think we have 50 users and you'll pay for 50 users at a time and then we we debit against that right um and then on the data center side we do source side deduplication which let me just explain that right deduplication is a bat it's a mainly a backup term that talks about finding all of the duplicate data like in not just duplicate files but duplicate uh data within the files um, mm -hmm. There's a lot of duplicate data in backups because you do all these full backups and everything. Uh, we find that duplicate data at the beginning of the backup process at the client. And then mm -hmm. so we eliminate it both. It means you need less bandwidth and then you need less storage. We charge mm -hmm. you for the deduplicated de result, the amount of data that we store on your behalf. And that's it. If you decide to delete half your data center and you tell us to delete those backups, your storage goes down, your bill goes down. Right, right, right. Um, you know, you sell off half your company, for example, uh, yeah. your bill, your bill goes down. That <laughs> right. doesn't happen in in you know in the on-prem world because you buy a box, you're stuck with that box mm -hmm. for however long that box is, right? Yeah, no, no, that's a great point. And I, I actually didn't I well, you know, you know how the 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 life cycle like how that process the process is so long to buy new hardware right you know yep. it takes this long time to just say man i'm going to uh i have to I, I need my threshold in there of course you gotta have your threshold and then uh uh by the time you reach 80 percent, maybe you're like okay let's let's hurry up and turn the alarms on to buy this new uh some more discs right you know for on-prem and then it takes a long time, may take three months, whatever it is, just to bring it in, add it to the disk trays and all that crap. And then next thing you know, you know, you might have ran over and you're like, oh, shit, you know, we're, we're, we're yeah. sitting there. We're stuck. Right. You know, we're stuck yeah. because we didn't get it in time. Right. You know, whereas. That just, yeah, that just cloud, doesn't happen in the cloud. It doesn't. Right. You know, you sit there and you can scale so easily. Right. The resources you can scale up and down. You know, the down part is really key to me, too. But but the, the up is important. Right. I can scale on the fly. Right. I think about something as basic as your Google photos or your, all the Google stores is out there. Right. You know, and and I and I get an alert that says, hey, look, you're 15 percent 
you know, you're, you're about to reach capacity of your, your storage because you have all these emails, the photos, all that stuff. And then next thing you know, you say, look, I'm just going to buy more right now. And yeah. right now it expands to an additional yeah. whatever amount yeah. that you need, yeah. you know. So, uh, no, no, nah, that was a great point. So I want to take you back, right? I want to take you back. And for me, it's back because, you know, yeah. I, I, I'm thinking about tape versus disc versus a cloud, right? You know, and I say back because, man, I don't even know where, for me, cloud, I mean, tape is it. I mean, not tape is it, but cloud is it right now. Right. Disc is still there, right? And when you think about tape, I, I, to be honest, I don't think I've heard anybody working in that app so far and then working at Oracle right before then. And it, 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 well, at Oracle, I did hear tape uh, uh fair fairly because they, uh, they bought storage tech yeah yeah exactly exactly yeah. so uh but but i would say probably in a year and a half maybe i don't think i've heard tape right you know but from your point of view right we you will be able to educate the audience and why why tape is important uh but i want to ask you you know your views on cloud versus disk versus tape you know yeah, what's, exactly. your, what's your point of view so um, th this part may surprise some people, right? Because I, I work at a, I work at a no tape company, right? Mm -hmm. um, right. We're, we're a hundred percent in the cloud. We, our technology runs in AWS. Um, and so, you know, all our customers backups are stored in S3. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're all about, we're all about object storage. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I, I'll, I'll say a couple of things uh, about tape that might surprise your your average listener and, may, and maybe you as well. One, more tape is sold today than ever before. How about what? That? <laughs> <laughs> Every year, tape continues to go up. Uh, uh -huh. I will. It doesn't go up at the same rate as the other storage devices, but it has continued to go up every single year right tape mm -hmm. has not gone away um so that's number that's number one um now what it has done is that it's virtually disappeared uh but not completely virtually disappeared from operational backup and recovery there mm -hmm. it, it's it's gotten some resurgence due to ransomware and the idea of rolling um, you know, ransomware attacking your backups, which I was talking about a few minutes ago, right? So, like, mm -hmm. well, they're gonna, they're not gonna take, my, they're not gonna attack my tape sitting over there in Iron Mountain. You're right. <laughs> right? So there's been, there's right. been some, uh, there's been a little bit of resurgence, but not much in the backup and recovery. Where, where tape is um, living and thriving is in uh, environments where they store a crap ton of data right mm -hmm. um and uh but most of it isn't used actively used so we mm -hmm. talked about this the active archive idea before right um think about the, uh, the perfect use case is media and entertainment right mm -hmm. you think about um you, you know peter jackson right yeah yeah uh, yeah okay so Peter Jackson loves red cameras. Red is like one of the darlings of the of the um, the entertainment industry. They happen to be. I live in San Diego. They happen to be a San Diego company. They are ha, red hot. They're, they're huge. Mm -hmm. Peter Jackson does all his stuff on red cameras. A lot of people do. But when he was filming like The Hobbit, right? Mm -hmm. He had uh, thirty six red cameras filming simultaneously. So uh -huh. he's doing all this motion capture stuff and all that stuff and live action as well. And, and he's doing 3D. So 3D means uh, you have to have two cameras for every shot, right? Because that, that's mm -hmm. how you get 3D. And so he's got 18 pairs of these rolling to get every angle of every take because the, the actual thing that's happening is so expensive to do. Mm -hmm. um, well, every one of these is just spitting out terabytes and terabytes and terabytes of data and then he wants to hold on to that because you know 30 years from now they might want to do the the director's cut of uh oh, yeah. you know of what so he wants to hold on to all of that anybody that stores that amount of data on spinning disc is an idiot okay because uh -huh. the, 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 the is it because the, of the cost 
the cost, the cost. Well, two reasons, two reasons. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. One, number one is the cost. The, it, it's uh-huh. it's multiple orders of magnitude cheaper to use tape versus disc. Number one. Uh-huh. Number two, and I could almost put this as number one, it's actually safer to store data on tape for 30 years, actually just 10 years. If you're storing data for 10 years or more, it's safer to store it on tape than it is to store it on disc. Because what? it's something called... Hold on, hold on. Yes. Hold on, they're, they're, hold on. Hold on. I, I'm, I'm gonna explain. I'm gonna explain. There's something explain called it, bit it, rot. Uh-huh. Okay. There's something called bit rot. It is an acknowledged, um, you know, magnetic degradation, right? Uh-huh. It's an acknowledged fact in storage. It it has. It's been around for a hundred years. Well, it's been around for however long there's been magnetic storage, and basically what it is is over time. The, the the magnetic bits that are stored as a one or a zero will flip and become the other one. If they're a one, they they will flip over yeah. uh, and become a zero. Ac- not accidentally, that's the wrong word, but just just it will happen, and it happens over time. And it's a it's a fact of life for all magnetic storage media. Okay, Man. it it's it's worse actually for. Um, Solid state media, by the way, solid state media has to be powered all the time, mm-hmm. right? You you can't un, you can't unplug a solid state device and then set it on a shelf and expect that data to be good in in five years, okay? Man. But with with a disk drive, if you put data on um, on um, a, a disk drive. You will have, and you store it on that disk drive. Not, I'm not talking about moving, using a disk drive for five years. Store that data on disk drive and just leave it there for five years. You will have some magnetic degradation in five years.